identify a narcissist on the first date before it's too late. If you meet someone on a first date and they're not nervous, anxious or shy and they're just acting as though it's just another day, that is a huge red flag because they should be nervous, they should feel anxious and shy because they're meeting a new person, they're experiencing someone for the first time, they've never met you before and especially if they are interested in you, if they like you and they are attracted to you. They should feel nervous. They should feel anxiety and anticipation. They should seem easily excited or irritated, just as if they were at a job interview. They should feel and show uncomfortable feelings of uncertainty as a result of something that is important to them, something that they may not want to lose. But narcissists don't typically act that way on the first date because they've done this so many times before and they're not even viewing you as a separate person with your own feelings, wants, needs, desires, dreams, goals and ambitions. They're viewing you as an extension of themselves, as their possession, as something that belongs to them, as something that exists to serve them, which is how they always view their sources of supply. So to them it's customary ordinary, usual, habitual and routine. It's not anything unusual. It's something that they've been accustomed to through frequent and regular repetition. And if at any time they feel like you don't like them, they will mold themselves into whatever they think you need them to be so that you don't reject them. And this is why they don't have to feel nervous. Because they're chameleons, they can shapeshift in any moment. So it's a huge red flag if they're not nervous. It reveals that they don't really value you because they already see it as though they own you. They already see it as though everything you have belongs to them. Because they've done this so many times before. They're master manipulators. They've had a lot of experience, so they already know what they need to do to secure you as their source of supply, to where you may think that you found your soulmate, because that's the type of effect that they want to have on you, and they know how to achieve that effect on you, because they've done this many times before, so they're not really present, they're not really connected to you, they're just an autopilot, because it's second nature to them, they're going through the motions, they're pretending, they're simulating actions, which is why it may often come across as though they're doing it without any enthusiasm or commitment because they've done it so many times before to the point where it now just seems ordinary and routine. So now no person is special, it doesn't matter who it is. because they may have manipulated people who are just as successful or attractive as you many times before, people who are far out of their league. And yet, as a result of their manipulation, they've seen them fall apart each and every time, so they don't view you any different. They see it as though they can work you, just as they did with every other person before you, because they're bums, scroungers, derelicts, users. They use people. They step on people to get ahead. People are just objects to them, so no one is special to them. They prioritize themselves above everyone else. They have an inflated ego, so it doesn't matter how great you are. They have to think they're better than you. Which is why it's only a matter of time until they devalue you, because they do not respect anyone. They're not used to respecting anyone because they toy with people, they use people. They are the predator and you are their prey. Which is why if you are on a first date, pay attention to if they are nervous. Are they providing you with what you want and need? Are they trying to impress you? 
or do they think that they shouldn't have to? Because that can reveal how much experience they've had and what types of people they've been dealing with in their past. It can reveal if they really like you or if they're just trying to get something from you. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, but it's important to pay attention to things because the reality is that in this day and age, even if you are a high value person, a corrupt, rude and indecent person will come along and make you feel like you're nothing because that's how they act around people. They're very egotistical. They think they're better than everyone even though they may never have worked a day in their life and they don't have anything of significant value to offer you they could just be a basic person who lives off the system and yet somehow they always seem to have every hot new thing that's out because they're selfish and ignorant and they always have an attitude to anyone who isn't doing anything for them even though they may not be doing anything for you and yet you may be accomplished and successful but they will find a way to use their ego to destroy your ego. They will be driven by their own insecurities to destroy your real self-confidence. To destroy the real person that you've become with nothing but a facade. Something that isn't even real. Something that doesn't have any value. Which is why you should never tolerate any lack of acknowledgement or disrespect from these types of people. Because they are low lives. They have no values or standards for themselves. They exist by immoral or criminal activities because they're of an extremely low social status and moral character. They live like trash and they don't care to improve themselves. Many of them are lazy and unemployed by choice. And they have drug addicts as friends. They're miserable people. So they have no guilt over doing rotten or criminal acts. They will hurt innocent and naive people and then blame their victim for not being as low life as they are. They will purposely try to bring pain, dysfunction, chaos or anything negative but they intend to try to teach people a lesson while hoping that it will destroy whatever hope, beauty or strength that a low life like themselves cannot endure. So they don't understand what value or respect is. They think very differently to us. They don't value or see people as they actually are. They view people how they want to view people, to favour themselves. So they don't even see themselves. They don't even recognise their own value. They have an inflated ego, an inflated perception of themselves, which leads to arrogance and disregard for other people, and a distorted view of their abilities and accomplishments, because they have an exaggerated sense of importance, superiority and entitlement. There's nothing wrong with having self-confidence and a positive view of yourself, as long as you actually set out to do and achieve things. And you either get a positive result or you learn from what you did wrong. But these people don't set out to do anything. They believe there's something just because they think it. All they have is an ego which is not practical or useful. So they're not suitable, sensible, appropriate or realistic because they haven't done anything to warrant that type of self-confidence. They haven't achieved anything, and yet they prance around like they've already done it. They're losers. They take everything for granted. They don't even know what they have, so then they screw it up. They're always making bad choices. They mess up their own lives and everyone else's life around them. And then they may often come back just to tease and taunt you for their own enjoyment. When really, it's because they can't deal with the shame of being such a loser. They have no respect for themselves and they have no respect for you. Which is why you must distance yourself from these types of people. You should never associate yourself with them. All they can do from their position in life is hate on you. Because there is an extreme difference. You are polar opposites. You're disciplined and hardworking, they're not. You care about yourself and your life, they don't. Because they don't even care about themselves. They don't even care enough to do better. They'd rather just lay in their own filth. 
which is why you can't make anything work with them. It will go bad, it will come crashing down and you will lose everything because they don't respect you. They don't even respect themselves, which is how you can identify them on a first date. Because if they care enough about themselves, they're going to respect themselves. They're going to be putting in work on themselves. They're going to be doing something to improve in their own life. But if they're not even treating themselves good, they're not going to treat you good. Most people are not going to treat another person better than they treat themselves. Unless they're a codependent, or unless they have issues with self-esteem. Which is why it all starts with ourselves first. We must love ourselves first before we can love anyone else. We must take care of ourselves before we can take care of other people. Because otherwise you're not going to have any care or love to give. Which is how you can detect these types of people. By their lack of self-respect. Because people who lack self-respect will not respect you. They will sit in your car and act like it belongs to them. They might even put their feet up on your dashboard. And you don't even know who they are. It's your first time meeting them. Because they have no self-respect, they have no boundaries. So they will act arrogant and entitled. They will act like they own the things that you won't. When you're not even married to them, and you're not yet in a relationship, which reveals a lot about their character, or their lack of character, because they're not trustworthy. And if they're able to act that way with you on the first meeting, it reveals what they may have done in the past. It reveals that they've been through those experiences before. They've done these things with other people before you. And that's how they're so comfortable doing it to you. Because they're used to stepping over people's boundaries. They're used to doing and taking whatever they want. And other people may have let it happen. They may have tolerated it. Because that's what they're used to. But you're different to all of the other people they've met. Because you set the standard. You expect a certain level of quality. Which may cause many of them to feel threatened. So if you set a boundary, don't go back on it. They may just leave you on the first date because this is all they know. It's all they've been taught in their lives. They don't know how to act appropriately. They don't know what's acceptable. You have to teach them respect. Because they have no manners or standards. They never had anyone there to teach them these things. So they don't know the correct way to behave. And many of them don't care to learn because it's all about themselves, which is completely backwards. Because all they do is beg and scrounge. All they do is attain things without earning it. They have nothing going for themselves in life. So they have no right to be demanding anything. And they shouldn't even be worth your time. Because they're just going to take you down with them. They're not good for your life. They're negative and positive people do not need negative people. People often talk about how friends and family are so important, but what's the point if they're not even good? If they don't even have their required qualities? If they're not even a benefit or advantage to you? They're completely worthless. They're a waste of your time because they have no respect for themselves. So they don't have any respect for you. They don't mind degrading you. They don't mind not being any good to you. They're comfortable with holding you back. So by you being near them or by being associated with them, you are disrespecting yourself. And you must respect yourself by walking away at the earliest opportunity. When you're on a first date, they should be excited. And they should be nervous. They should not be treating you with a little effort or care. They should be considering things very carefully and they should have respect for your boundaries because that reveals how they've acted before you. It reveals that they've treated other people in their lives with respect. But if they're just treating you any sort of way, it shows that they have a lack of respect and care. It reveals that they are a problem. 
they're an unpredictable and uncontrolled person who's likely to cause problems for you because that's what problematic people do. They're difficult and troublesome. They cause problems wherever they go, which is not what you deserve. You deserve better because you show qualities that are deserving of something better. You've put in the work, so you are entitled to something better. You have the right to demand a certain standard from people who come into your life. And if they do not meet that standard, then you can leave them alone. It is better for you to be by yourself than to be around people who are going to make you worse. Because this is how you end up with worse. By settling for less than what you are. But they will act this way as well. Only with them, it's out of their own ego. It's not based on their qualities or on anything that they've actually achieved. So you can have greater value than they do. And yet they will try to get you to doubt your own value. Which is why you cannot settle for anyone who overlooks how valuable you are. Because by doing that, you will get what you deserve at the end. While they will continue to overestimate their own value, while underestimating other people's value, which is the worst thing that they could do. Because then where are they going to end up? If they have this exaggerated sense of their own abilities and importance, how is that going to help them if it's not even real? It's only going to lead them to their demise, because they're not going to find anyone else like you. They are common and ordinary, but you are rare. So they're going to be the one who is left feeling bitter and resentful, because they lost out on something they could have had with you. You're the price. You're the one with the value. They just overvalued themselves and undervalued you. And by doing that, they should lose you. They should never have the opportunity to be with you, because they took you for granted. So you shouldn't just keep being there. Or even if they reject you, you shouldn't see that as a negative. It is a positive. It's just going to increase your power and intensity. It's going to make you better. And then you're going to find someone better and you're going to have a better life. While well, they're going to be left wondering what would have happened if they had just listened to you. If they hadn't have taken you for granted. But you shouldn't feel bad. Because on your end, you did what you should have done. But well, for them, it was just all about themselves. It was just all about what they wanted to do and how they wanted to treat you. So they're the one who is going to be left with regrets. Because they're the ones who didn't treat you as important or impressive. And you didn't do that with them. So you will be the one who is highly valued. While well, they will become nothing, they will not hold any importance. Because they messed up. They had plenty of opportunities. But they messed up each and every time as a result of their own arrogance. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comments section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor you can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.